Oh, Bill's still dancing over there to our little uh, our little jiggy jiggy thing thing song. Yeah. Over there. Darn right. Fun. Welcome is. everybody to another episode of Flight School. My name is Matt Crump, and over there is my co-pilot and best buddy over there named Bill Dolan. I'm so excited Ooh. he's here today. Thank Ooh. you, Bill. Just flew in from are, the coast. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. We are having a blast today. And uh, you'll be watching this on Friday morning. And what a week we have had, I'm sure. <laughs> We've had an awesome week this week. It's More been an amazing day. weekend. Yeah, Labor Day was it was pretty good for me. How was your Labor Day weekend? Great. Great. Absolutely great. Lots, yeah. of, lots, lots of fun. I mean, every day is a glorious day because, one, I woke up. Yeah. I was given a breath of life, and I realized today, as anybody that's listening or anybody's watching, if you got up today, it is a confirmation that you have purpose today. Mm, you have absolutely. meaning today. You have value today. You have destiny today, and you have an opportunity to make a profound difference in the world today. And, uh, you know, to so to that degree, I kind of find myself, of course, coffee helps. It gives me a lot. <laughs> Yeah. A lot, a lot of doubt. encouragement to to uh, really not only Labor Day weekend or any weekend, actually every single day. And I will tell you, I'm just going to jump in here. For Go for it, buddy. We got, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got to spend my time right here. <laughs> I've seen Matt Crumb's post. And for those of you who are looking at him and going, oh. Oh, wait a minute, Matt. So You're that's a little bit different here today. A little bit different. <laughs> Did you have an appointment with Gillette? Or yeah. Some type of um, a beard product? Well, the answer is yes. And I'm not going to steal the thunder here, but I will tell you that one of the joys I have of knowing Matt and getting to do this, this program from time to time is this is truly a great man who has been through a profound series of life experiences that come with them profound and deep lessons that all of us can benefit from. And so while this show isn't all designed to go into all those, I mean, we teach some of the things and, and some of the great stuff that, that Matt has learned, but I encourage you go back to this post. If you see a post about Matt and it shows his longer beard, whatever, it's an eight minute piece but it's probably eight of the most inspirational minutes you'll have in your life. Mm, uh, so I encourage you to go back, look at that. And if you don't know Matt for some crazy reason, uh, <laughs> reach out to him, like him, respond to his stuff, connect with him on LinkedIn. And aren't you on like 23 other platforms, Matt? Uh, at least maybe 24, but uh, yeah. I, I call LinkedIn home though. That's my home base. So I, I love, oh, yeah. love LinkedIn. Yeah. Love our family here. It's been fantastic. And, Thank you for those for those words of. I started uh, to just jump on that, but it makes, it makes me that much more blessed, buddy. It really does. It was Let's a big deal here. for me. It was a huge, huge deal to put that video out. It was a big moment. I wasn't sure I was going to cut it or not. I got really nervous about it. I had planned for it. I was ready to go. I had my mm -hmm. wife and kids' video already done, kind of like whenever I was ready to go for it. And mm -hmm. that one morning, I sat there in the bathroom mm -hmm. and I had the scissors and I said. If you don't do it now, you're just not going to do it. And this is something I have to do because I've got to move to a new place. Right. And I just first cut. I thought, well, you're in it now, buddy. You're going to have yeah. the weirdest yeah. in the world or you're going to do this thing all the way. So obviously you can tell, you know, you can actually see my neck, which is funny for me. No, I, mean, I was going to say you have a very attractive neck. You know, I could never say that before. You have it. And again, is the idea of today's show, we weren't going to go into it so much, but I, I think it's really important to understand that for you cutting your beard, a lot of us have life experiences for which sometimes you want to monumentalize those things. I mean, for example, you know, uh, some people get charm bracelets. Some people get tattoos. Some people, I mean, I've got a piercing right here, and there's a story behind that. Why do I have that, and why is that particularly in my ear, and what does that mean? And uh, and so the same thing for your beard. There's this powerful story there, and uh, um, and I'm, I'm hoping that as people are listening, not only they'll go back and watch this, but think about those things in their own life that you have an opportunity to monumentalize because of the depth of the meaning, the depth of the lesson, the depth of the memory. Maybe it is a springboard to 
a place you want to be or that which you aspire to. And there's power in that. And, uh, and that's what you did, Matt. That's what you did for a lot of us. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. And the, you. Yeah, you're so right about all that. And really the only way they're going to be able to get to that next, I even hate saying next level. Cause I really don't believe in, in that kind of a thing. I think it's more of a, an opportunity to advance. I mean, some people could say it's probably next level, but you know, you're never going to get to, to, to the next area of your life. If you stay where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's been a long time. And, you know, I felt like, you know, part, part of my battle was, was, you know, growing the beard out so I, until I felt like we had defeated cancer and I had got some good news lately. And I kept thinking, well, why do I still have the beard? If mm -hmm. I said this, I'm going to do this. Right. Because actually what was stopping me a bit, honestly, was a bit of fear that I'm going to go back to Duke again here shortly, which I have to every, every couple of months. Yeah. And they're going to say in this next test, ah, you, you got another tumor. I mean, it's possible. But at this point in my life, I'm I'm done. Like I said in the video, I'm done being a patient. I'm done. I'm done with that whole like, oh my God, what's next? And what's we're gonna? What's the next worst thing? I'm ready to say, let's move forward, right? So it just takes a little bit. Of, uh, and it doesn't matter what your what your story was, what it happened. Mm -hmm. It could have been some horrific thing done to you physically. It could be something done mentally. It could be you know all kinds of of issues that we all face. And until we're willing to to cut them off and say that's it, I'm done. It's it's never going to leave, right? But yeah. that's a whole other story. I appreciate that. And yeah, there is a great video out about it. We'll spend another eight minutes talking about it here now, but we only got a little bit of time to dig into where we started on our last episode. Uh, we started talking about a tool I created called um, the Fifth Gear, and yeah. that's relative towards the uh, the four stages of learning, specifically around unconscious competence. And I know you wanted to to go with that a little bit, so I just want to set that up a little bit and. Yeah, yeah, ahead. I think it's important. It just, just, I mean, for those of us that were with with us when we talked about this before, great, great foundation. If you weren't, I don't want you to miss the foundation. So, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna uh, lay low here, Matt. I'd like you to be able to review uh, the concept of the fifth gear, and then to move into that area. I think that we promised our uh, the folks that were with us last week, and a little deeper understanding of what that unconscious competence and conscious competence uh, is all about. So yeah. if you don't mind, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. And I pop that up on the screen so everybody can see it here. Uh, there we are. So we've got the tool here called the fifth gear that I've created, and it's based around the four stages of learning, unconsciously incompetent, consciously incompetent, and then consciously competent to unconsciously competent, all those tongue twisters to say, when you get to this point, where a lot of people get to in their lives and in one area or another, it could be driving, could be uh, um, the coffee you have in the mornings, the way you make your coffee. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we're unconsciously competent about, but specifically in this tool, we're talking about people that are, uh, are leaders, um, CEOs, executives, uh, entrepreneurs, people that are, are really pressing into their call in life. And sometimes in that area, we, we in our unconsciously competent areas, um, have the possibility of becoming complacent, stagnant, uh, end up making some mistakes, whatever. It doesn't mean that there's bad things that happen here. It could be absolutely fantastic. But there's a way to look at this place and determine this place of unconsciously competent. I'm trying to circle. hope you can see that. Um, is where, where we find there are some gold nuggets. There's some places where you could really dig deep into what that means. So that's why I created that tool over here called the the fifth gear all right so the fifth gear is a place that is outside of this four stages of learning that looks into this unconscious competence from a place of conscious competency <laughs> it's a lot there right so there's several ways to do that uh we went through them pretty quickly last time and uh today let me pull this back up for me scroll up here uh today kind of want to start off in this place of well, there's three places mainly. You got identifying, learning, and um, and teaching. All right, but we're going to go back to identifying because that's really the the primary place you want to to look into. That's taking time to identify where you are and what you do. Not not talking about your daily tasks, your programs, your products, and things, but what makes you you. Identifying how you got to your unconscious competence. How did you get there in the first place? And I'll explain that unconscious. I'll unpack that in a second. When you finally were able to put things in autopilot and not even think about it any longer, right? Not talking about all the 
all the kinds of details and things of that nature. But when you finally got to this place, that place of unconscious competence. So you you go to a position, whatever, maybe you start a company, you start a job, you uh, whatever the case may be, and you have to be trained. You have to learn what that thing is. So you're coming to a place dumb. <laughs> pretty much like, I mean, some people are pre-qualified, but let's say you come to a new place, you're just learning, right? It's just like, I, 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 right? you just come in there, please in teach there. me how to do this, right? right. And then that's, that's just a place where, uh, if I scroll back down to the four stages of learning, uh, that's that place of unconsciously incompetent. Doesn't mean that you're a moron or you know or anything like that. It just means you just don't know, right? And some, mm-hmm. some people say you don't know what you don't know. And then you you move into if that. I, if, I can, if I can jump in there just for a minute, I think yeah. it's safe to say that there's a lot of us, including myself, that are in that space for different areas of life. I mean, because you can be uh, unconsciously incompetent, for example, in my understanding of of uh, human relationships. You know, right. I can be there's that the that 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 term people use about blind spots. Is another way of gently saying unconsciously incompetent is that you have blind spots and the willing, I think it was a breakthrough and a willingness to accept that there's things that we don't know that we need to know. Right. Instead, one of the symptoms I think of that is that they will defend that they know what they think they know because most of us are afraid to not know something. We want yeah, to have absolutely. definition. We want to have a grounding. And we're more inclined to ground ourselves on something that isn't true or a falsehood or, or whatever it is than to admit that I, I don't know. So I think, it's a, I think it's, a, it's a breakthrough, Matt. And I'm really noticing that a lot, especially lately. <laughs> well, the funny <laughs> thing about that, honestly, Bill, is the, the older we get, the more we start to recognize some things than we didn't when we were 20 years old. Right. And yeah. yeah, no doubt. I mean, I listened to my daughter, 16 years old, telling me, dad, I mean, just because you're, you're old and I'm 16 doesn't mean I don't know things. Doesn't mean I don't understand stuff. And you know, I'm, I'm not dumb. Blah, blah, blah. I get it. I know you're really smart. You just don't really know what's coming after this point right here. And I'm trying to tell you what's there and you're not listening. And it's so easy, even as adults, for us to, to get stay there because sometimes it has to do with pride. There's a yeah. lot of pride sometimes we have in our egos and our prides that that stop us from being able to move past that point that was that point of, of ignorance, of unconscious competence, right? So it's important to stay teachable in our lives, humble, mm-hmm. uh, to be able to gain access to those places. I've been hurt sometimes. It hurts on the inside when people tell me some stuff that... I'm really passionate about. I think I'm I'm doing a, I'm killing it. I've got a home run there, and somebody tells me, "Now you suck there, right?" I mean, they wouldn't say it necessarily okay. that way. Some people I have had said it, but primarily that's the way it feels. Like, oh, and when that happens, you know, you can either get defensive, the walls go up, or you can say, "All right, I'm I'm willing to hear what you have to say because whatever you're going to tell me makes makes me better to do what I really want to do than than I want that, right?" And that's a that doesn't come overnight for a lot of people. No. No, I think it's completely unnatural. It really uh, is. It's, it's quite unnatural. Uh, yeah. The next the next point we were talking about there past um, the unconsciously incompetent is a consciously incompetent. Now you know that you don't know a thing about what they're talking about, right? I know that I don't know. And mm-hmm. I feel really crazy right now. I feel awkward here. This is a place where people can retreat mm-hmm. or a place where people can start digging in. You know, the first place is possibly an offensive area, a defensive area that happens, or you move forward into a place where you're feeling like, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. And that could also be a place where you move further into by getting the help and access that you need, or you retreat completely because you just don't want to be told or you don't want to face the facts, right? In some isn't, cases. Isn't this a good spot for um, people that really decide, you know what? I need a coach in this area. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that's, of course, that's the humility that's going to take you to the coach because you're you're admitting, I do need the help. Right. You can't, hire, you can't hire a coach to, to say, I don't like anything you're saying. I don't want anything you're done. Blah, 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 right? I mean, when you hire a coach, you should do a little shopping, obviously. But when you do hire a coach, 
Yeah. It should be the fact that you say, I'm I'm here at your feet. Whatever you say is what I'm going to do, right? Well, I think, it, and I, I just throw this out. And I, I say this respectfully for all my friends on LinkedIn, because I, you know, if you're active for 20 minutes, you're going to be bombarded with different vendors, you know. And But one of the things that we have a, a, a lot on LinkedIn are coaches. And uh, one of the, I think, failures of anybody marketing coaching is the recognition that some people do not know they need a coach. And so they make the mistake. Now, granted, we know people buy outcomes and transformation. You know, uh, <clears throat> I want to experience something or I want to receive something. Therefore, I'm going to buy it. But if they don't attach you and they don't attach the uh, the process to achieving that outcome, you're in sales mode. And yeah. so I see a lot of coaches saying, would you like to have more joy, make more money, grow hair, blah, 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 whatever it is. And well, I'm going to talk about the hair part right there. Why don't you make much of mention that today? Yeah, I'm sorry. That was a tender subject, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they set this here and forget that Oh, here. I'm putting my hand here. <laughs> the gap between here and here has to do with one, the recognition that this is the coaching I need. And the second is you're the coach I need to get it from. Those are two giant leaps. So I only throw that out because I think that's important that if you are at that point where you're thinking, okay, I'm consciously incompetent in this area, now is the time to be vigilant because there is help out there. There are people that you can get the resources from and the trust uh, that can go with it. But I would say choose wisely, but for goodness oh, yeah. sake, do not retreat. Do not no, don't retreat. retreat. And that's what, like you said, choose wisely. I mean, there, just because you contact one coach doesn't mean that's the only one coach to contact. Right. Um, and you don't feel guilty when having your discovery call, strategy call, whatever it's called for that particular coach. Mm -hmm. And you're just not, you know, feeling it all the way. You're just not quite sure. Or there's this little, I don't know. And it's not the whole, I don't know, because I don't want to submit here or I don't want to really admit my faults. It's that I don't know that I don't feel like we really are going to connect, you know. Right. Uh, and, and obviously in a coaching relationship, it's not always going to be. I tell folks a lot of times, even though I, I, I'm, I'm a nice guy, I try to be as nice as I can. But I, I can also be kind of Simon Cowlish when it comes down to coaching. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I have the ability to to fly at 50,000 feet with people and I could see where you want to go and what's happening and sometimes those blocks in your life before you even do. And I can know what's going on down there. Right. And then. There's times when you may want to take a left or right turn. And I know that's not the right way you can need. It's not, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Right. And I try to do my best to steer, to steer somebody that way. And sometimes it doesn't feel good for a person when that happens. You know, you try your best to communicate it in the best ways, but there's going to be times you're going to be challenged and you should always have somebody that's going to challenge you. Never somebody that's just going to tickle your fancy. But somebody's well, going to challenge you, right? Well, and this is what I love about you is, is, is that, uh, and here's a quick tip and then I'll shut up again. Is that, when you have someone that says, I'm here to coach and I want to do a discovery call and they're doing less discovery, more sales, that's a yeah. red flag. Yeah. They're selling you on the coaching and coaching with them versus really understanding whether this is a good fit, whether you really have uh, are in a place where they can uniquely help you on that journey, uh, but more just about pitching you to get the thing. Red flag. Red flag. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally yeah. agree. It's taken me a long time to figure out how to do that as well. I didn't want mm -hmm. to seem salesy because I'm a passion for people, but there's there's ways and things you say things. And and ultimately, my passion is for the other person. And although I do want somebody to buy my program because I need, you know, that's how I make a living, too. Right. Um, I don't want to 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 bring somebody in and I, that I've manipulated to come to my program because it's going to be way worse for me than whatever they paid me. It could be the ruin of my whole my whole ministry, and my whole business, you know, so it's it's best to be honest up front and be able to share with people what's about them and what they need on the front side. And that's really what it comes down to when you're in a place of of this competency we're talking about, where you're you're just unconsciously competent or I mean, completely incompetent. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Consciously incompetent. So what's the next one? <laughs> Yeah. So, and we've got like five minutes, I think I'm trying to look at my, I'm trying to be good boy today. Se seven minutes. All right. So uh, 
<laughs> the next one was when we go from consciously incompetent, we've been unconsciously competent. I'm I'm a goofball to consciously competent. I realize I don't know what the heck I'm doing to consciously competent. Now you've come to a place where you have probably walked along alongside someone. You have been coached or trained or um, given the opportunity to do things. And now you've gotten to a place where now you can do this, whatever this is. You can you can dig this this oil well. You can you can create this website. You can do a funnel. You can fill in the blank, right? You can now do this. And for the most part, you can do it on your own. However, you still may need from time to time a bit of, of help along the way when you're consciously competent, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so that place is a it's a really great place to be. And I think there's a lot of places where you can learn very easily in that position. And then you get into, which is not a bad thing, it's a great thing, but you get into this, this yellow square up here called unconsciously competent. Yeah. And that's a place where you're breathing now. That is a breathing place where, where how do you express or explain to somebody how you breathe, right? I, right? I suck area. And you don't think about breathing. It's just a natural part of your life. As much as whatever this thing you're doing is, is a natural part of your life. It's just, it's the way it goes. It's the way it flows. Everything's been running smooth. And you rarely think about anything unless there happens to be a crisis or emergency. And even then, your unconscious competency shifts into high gear and you're able to do things, right? So yeah. that place of unconscious competency is really where people find their superpower. It's really who you who you are at that point that makes you who you are, That's that makes others who they are. That's, that's so a great, great, powerful place where this superpower exists. So much to the point where even like thinking of super superpower, superman, uh, for most of the time, if you're thinking about Superman, he didn't think about, OK, how do I be Superman now? How do I how do I fly? How do I stop this bullet? Oh, they're going to shoot at me. How do I do this? You know, It doesn't happen. He just boom. It just he, he, he reflects bullets. He flies. You know, he does things because he's Superman. That's just who he is. And when we get to this place of unconscious confidence, that's who we are. That's just what we do. That's how it flows. Right. And then be and when you when you're doing that for a period of time to somebody says to you, hey, Bill, how did you do that? Uh, I've heard people say this. I don't know. I just do. That's a lot of common comments that come back. I don't know. I just do. And for me, that's why I wanted to create the fifth gear that we're going into a little bit. We'll spend more time going to that next next episode. Um, mm -hmm. But in the fifth gear, that's how you're able to, to engage something in your life, to look back at that conscious competency of this unconscious competency in your life to be able to express and explain it to other people, sharing your superpower. Not, as I said, not, not like your, your tasks, your books, your websites, your, not your stuff, but the mojo, the superpower, the what makes you you to give to somebody. And that, I think, is a game changer. It's gigantic. It's gigantic. And, I, and, I, and, and I, I'm excited for those people uh, that can catch this early on in life. Oh, yes. Uh, I think most of us live uh, a life that is surrounded by social beatings. You can't do this. You can't do that. Um, and then our own, our own uh, things that we say to ourselves, our, our, um, our self-talk, our self-condemnation, our comparisons with others, and in the secret belief that we are what we do, not who we are, mm -hmm. um, that we're human doings and not human beings. Mm -hmm. And we're more concerned with what we have than what we're being transformed into. And the idea that our lives are an instrument of transformation for others. This is bigger, bigger than all the measuring sticks that the marketing and sales uh, and business world can ever offer because it really addresses the idea of, you and the powerful unique value that you are and um it's funny uh the other day um uh over over labor day weekend i got kind of a, a rush project from a client that said hey can you really help us and i was working with someone who had been involved in the equestrian business and this, that means horses y'all horses i mean yeah horses uh, <laughs> yeah it was kentucky derby day oh nice and, is a big deal. They're involved in, in that space. And, and I'm working with truly one of the 
best of the best in the field. And, um, and it dawned on me and I, and I shared it with them that, you know, they were kind of lamenting that maybe I'm too old now and maybe I can't do this now. And maybe with this, and, and I remind them and I, and I share this in my book that every day today marks a day that you have never been smarter than you are today. That's so good. Never been wiser than today. You've never had more context than today. You've never been in a position to have a profound impact on the world than today. And I go into the, in of course, in my book about how, what that really means to live that out and to embrace that. But there's, it's so important that you embrace it because as m- much as this person had accomplished, it was hard for them to accept it because they'd already decided that the best was behind them hmm. and that couldn't get much better. And really they're on a downhill slope. They'd lost hope. They'd lost belief. And they bought into a lie that this world says that there's a point where you peak. And, and from that point on, it's like toast. Um, and actually, and I won't say the, the words that she said. <laughs> In case children are watching. <laughs> and um, secretly, I think sometimes we say those words to ourselves. Absolutely. And, and I think that's our beliefs. It's those places where, where we can make it or break it. You're right. I mean, it's, and a lot of times it's those words that are spoken over us. And, yeah. and, and yeah. we believe those words, as you mentioned before. And, you know, it comes a point in time that you have to say, no, I'm, I'm not going to believe that anymore. And it's not so easy by yourself. Obviously, it's it's so important to be able to have a great, I'm not talking about necessarily hiring somebody, but a great person of accountability in your life, someone that you like and love, someone that you serve, someone that serves you, someone that is probably a little bit further along in the game than you are that could speak life into you. There's places of that where you can find those uh, those accountabilities and, and move forward. And really, that's what we're going to do on our next episode, kind of digging into that area of how we're going to move forward when we identify some of the areas we talked about today and then find out how we engage that in our own personal lives. Because you have to know what, about what it is first in you before you can tell anybody else, right? So uh, that's what this whole fifth gear thing's about. And we'll we'll dig into that some more in our next episode. It looks like we're, we're out of time already. But I'll leave you with this seed because this is the cool part. I love it. That unconscious competence means that you're sitting on riches and opportunity that you're not even aware of. Mm, So good. I mean, there's so much there that going through this and peeling back and opening literally that treasure, treasure chest of awareness, is going to blow you away when you realize how much um, opportunity and blessing and wealth, and I don't just use that in the monetary way, and riches are in your life right now that simply just need to be unlocked. I so agree. That's why I love you so much. I love it. I I call it mining for gold, right? It's it's while you're in the pits, you're mining for gold, which we'll talk more about that too, but we're I love being on this show with you. We're having a blast. Mm-hmm. Folks, thanks so much for being with us again here today in our episode of uh, of Flight School. Woot, woot. All right. Woot. We're going to see you the next time. Now, don't forget, we're back again on Fridays now. We're Fridays, 1030 a.m. Eastern and 730 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, he's going to be a little sleepy in the morning. But uh, get, get, your coffee. get your coffee. Get your coffee. And your coffee and that's that's that. We'll see you the next time, everybody. Thanks for being with us. God bless you. Woot, woot. Each week, Bill and I bring you episodes to help you get and stay grounded in your business and your life with lessons that help you fly higher heights and know exactly what your flight plan is. Join us each week on Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern and 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Welcome to Flight School.